welcome back. So, we will continue uh, the discussion on wave equation. Uh, in the context of uh, semi group. So, last time we <coughs> studied some uh, classical theory namely this conservation of energy for the wave equation and that is our uh, starting point. So, with that basis now we uh, go on to construct the semi group associated with uh, wave equation conservation of energy. So, let me just recall that. So, this is u t t minus Laplace n u equal to 0 in R n t positive and the initial conditions. So, u x 0 uh, equal to f 1 u t x 0 equal to f. So, when f 1 f 2 are smooth using Fourier transform we can write down uh, the solution of the wave equation. So, if omega is in R n so, we define this thing. So, energy of u uh, in omega at t. So, this is just uh, u t square. Let me just write it once again plus grad this is only with respect to x u x t square d x. So, u is the solution of the wave equation may be one has to put half for the correct things, but okay, that is. Uh, so, what we saw was for if f 1 the initial conditions are smooth functions with compact support. Uh, then the energy is conserved R n at T is equal to at T equal to 0 for all T. In fact, since the wave equation is invariant under uh, the mapping t going to minus infinity. Okay. So, we can take for all t bigger than r. Okay. So, the energy is conserved. So, this is our starting point and now here we have taken uh, <coughs> f 1 and f 2 smooth. So, you want to just complete we want to take completion of that space uh, with respect to this energy norm okay, in this sense, that sense. So, so, last time I defined that. Okay, so, let H d be the completion of so, ev everything I am doing in the free space. So, uh, completion of this C C in the norm. Okay, so that's directly norm. Uh, so let me put that as a, okay, let me write D. Okay, so this is just integral. Let me write it once. So, everything is in <coughs> integration is also over R n. Okay. So, this is just. 
So, I made a few remarks about this. Uh, this is also a Hilbert space. So, yes, T is a Hilbert space. and it is larger than h 1 r n. Okay, so, that is one thing and this I made a comment. So, h d is not a subspace of d prime r 2, but h d uh, is L 2 log r n for n bigger than equal to 3. Okay. So, we are work, working only in n bigger than equal to 2. So, this <coughs> forces us to choose the domain of the generator uh, carefully and as far as the second component. So, this is the first component namely F 1 just if you look at the uh, <coughs> energy. So, this uh, at t equal to 0, this will give you f 2 okay, and this gives you f 1, this comes from f 1. So, f 1 the, <coughs> uh, the first initial condition uh, that is the position and this is the velocity. So, that is uh, in h d and uh, the next one is in L 2. So, that is fine. So, we consider, <coughs> so let me just, so let h is h d cross h. Okay. So, this uh, c infinity c cross c infinity c is dense in h. Okay, so, this so, h is also a Hilbert space. So, let me just write uh, an element in this, this Hilbert space we denote uh, denote by. So, there are two components so, this I will write in matrix notation. So, it will be clear why we are writing that an element in H. So, this first component is in this H d and the second component is in L 2. Okay. So, what we have seen up and okay, let me write the inner product and norm once at least. So, that inner product. So, if you take f g in h, okay, the first component. So, this is f 1, f 2 and this is g 1, g 2. So, the first component <coughs> are uh, in h d. So, this let me write that. Okay f g. So, since there are many spaces, so let me just write that h. This is nothing but uh, integral grad f 1 dot grad g 1. So, we can also put a complex conjugate. Okay, I am not putting that, but strictly speaking we should put that uh, if we are considering complex valued functions. Uh, and the second component is simply that f 2 g 2. Okay, because both are in L 2. Okay, so, the norm, so f h square, so let me write that. So, this is uh, grad f 1 square plus So, this is the inner product and that is the norm. So, what the conservation of <coughs> energy tells us that this mapping, okay, the conservation of energy is 
So, let us rephrase that. So, you take this mapping f 1 f 2 and map it to the solution of the <coughs> wave equation with these components. Okay. So, at least when this f f is in <coughs> f 1 f 2 in c infinity uh, that implies norm of u u t in h is equal to norm of f 1 f 2 So, the solution of the wave equation though the initial conditions have compact support in general the solution uh, in y in general it is does not have compact support as t grows in fact, the support of u grows, but nevertheless the energy integral remains finite and this is what the conservation of energy tells us. Okay. And now, we want to extend want to extend this relation to h itself. So, now we want to take this f in this h and again map this to the solution of the equation and we want to get uh, <coughs> this conservation of energy. Okay. So, that certainly we can do because this C <coughs> since uh, this C infinity with compact support uh, is dense in H dense in H we can certainly we can certainly so, this I call uh, this mapping as u. Okay. So, let me just call it. We can extend u uh, by density and continuity. Okay. So, this u now f again f 1 f 2 but this is in now h and I want to map this to u u t again that is in h. So, this is the question certainly we can do that, but that is <coughs> so this uh, in fact it depends on t. So, this for every t we can do this. So, this I will write as t. The only question is why should this mapping be only of this form? Okay. We should be able to take a pair in H and map it to another pair in H. Okay. So, we will come to this question little later, but with this understanding let us calculate the generator. Okay. So, we are not yet uh, proved that that is a semi group or group, uh, but let us heuristically compute the generator. So, what is generator if you recall? So, we can write that as d by d t of u t f at t equal to 0. Okay. So, this is another way of writing that but by definition this d by d t is nothing this u t f is nothing but u u t. Okay. Just for the time being except that that is the <coughs> uh, mapping and this since you use a solution of the wave equation. So, this is nothing but u t u t t at t equal to 0 and this u t at t equal to 0 certainly we can easily get that that is f 2 
and this one since u satisfy the wave equation. So, this is Laplace e n u and again at t equal to 0. So, that is heuristically that is what we should get. Okay. So, the generator so this I can so this I write this has this matrix for Laplace zero. Okay. So that generator, so I call it G, is of that form. Okay. Of course, this thing you can get directly from the equation itself. So, if we just write this equation as a system, okay, so this implies first order system. So, this u u t same thing we get. Okay, so, this is u t, this is u t t and that is Laplacian u. So, just <coughs> you get. So, this is Laplace. So, again you get that. Uh, u so, in fact, if you write this in system form, we do get uh, this in the in the form of abstract Cauchy problem. Where now the operator is given by this g. Okay? And now you ask the same. So, here also the heuristically we got directly from the uh, wave equation. Uh, through that conservation of energy, but here just by writing a system we get that. Okay. So, with this motivation now our task is, <coughs> so our task is to show uh, that G generates a unitary group unitary group okay and then connect this group to then connect this analysis to the wave equation okay that's our final <coughs> Thing, right. So, we have to somehow connect this to wave equation, solution of the wave equation. Okay. So, in order to show that, so we have to carefully choose uh, this uh, generator of this G. Okay. <coughs> so, the domain of G. So, let me just Okay, so, d g of course, g d g is a <coughs> subspace of the Hilbert space h. Okay, so, again the elements will have two components. So, this is let me write that. So, f this is f 1 f 2 two components they are all in h okay, such that. So, look at here. Okay, so, what is the definition of the okay. so if g is this one so so this g of f is just nothing but f2 okay. so where f is f1 f2 so the second component 
becomes the first component under that mapping G and if that has to belong to the Hilbert space H this F 2 has to be in the space H D. Okay, so, let me write that first that is easier part. Okay, so, this is H D and the second part is Laplace in F 1. So, that should be in L 2. Okay, so, this is again uh, in this in the weak sense in the weak sense. As I commented last time, so we do not fully understand the nature of elements in HD only through that completion process we understand. Okay. So, since HD is not even uh, a subs, uh, subset of D prime R n at least in case of N 2. So, what we should do is this, this is in uh, H D. So, let me write that H D intersection D prime R n. So, this is the first component and then cross L 2. L 2. Okay. Fine. So, this is only necessary and only necessary if n is equal to 2. If n is bigger than or equal to 3, we know that <coughs> the elements of H d are L to log functions. So, automatically they have weak derivatives and we want this weak Laplacian to be in L 2. Okay. So, here is the theorem. Okay. So, that is So, theorem uh, G with domain of definition, domain of definition D G is skew symmetry. Skew adjoint. Okay, let me skew So that is G star is minus G by Stone's theorem. So this we have already studied. Stone's theorem. G generates a unitary group. So, the task is only to show that this operator G, uh, <coughs> so G is, so again you keep on writing that, so D G into H. Okay. So, let me again recall uh, some operator theory we did. Uh, some time back. Okay. So, when do you conclude that an operator is uh, self adjoint or skew adjoint? Okay. So, let me again recall. Okay. So, uh, maybe okay, let me V is not V. Okay. Let me just. So, A from D A, this is a subspace of H into H okay, linear operator, closed 
densely defined uh, symmetric operator. Okay, so that means just a x y is x a y for all x y in domain of a. Okay. So, we say that this A is self adjoint under these conditions. So, if A is a closed densely defined uh, symmetric operator in a Hilbert space H, then A is self adjoint if and only if is plus or minus i uh, belongs to rho i. In fact, there is a simplification with this <coughs> all the properties of this thing. So, even to show this thing need to show <coughs> suffice to, to show suffice is to show image of this i i plus or minus i minus a is dense in h. Okay, you just recall. So, this we already done that. Okay. So, what is the connection between self adjoint and skew adjoints? It is very simple. Okay. So, put b equal to so, plus or minus i a. So, then a is self adjoint if and only if uh, b is q adjoint. Okay. So, just this multiplication by plus or minus changes self adjoint to skew adjoint. Okay. So, we can now just transform this uh, condition on A to B directly. Okay. So, that is what we do. Okay. So, suppose B is a densely defined Uh, closed skew symmetric skew symmetric operator in a Hilbert space. So, skew symmetric means okay, let me just write that B x y is minus B uh, x B y for all x y in domain of p. Okay. So, then b is q adjoint if and only if this plus or minus 1 belongs to the resolved set. Okay. Again this you can write in terms of the image. Okay. Uh, so, this in order to show that under this condition that B is densely defined closed and skew symmetric. So, again suffices to show uh, this image of so plus or minus i minus B is dense, dense in the Hilbert space, whatever Hilbert space we are studying. Okay. So, with that recalling, uh, now we proceed to prove this, uh, let me 
just comment on the proof and then we will so about this g ok so just ok so proof i will just begin we will continue in the next class so we show uh, g is so the first one g is skew symmetry and this image of plus or minus i minus g is dense in h ok. So, this h of course, is the one we started with ok. So, this is easy to verify that g is uh, densely defined closed object densely defined already we have seen that densely defined closed object ok because this c infinity c cross c infinity c is in dg and that is dense in h ok. So, we will continue with this thank you.